Sony XB33 just come out. When I say just come out, well, it came out in May. Replaces a Sony XB32. Is it a lot better? What is the difference? We're going to find out in this review. And we're also going to hear it against the JBL Charge 4. The JBL Charge 4 is the oldest of this trio. Came out in 2018. Can the old boy JBL Charge 4 hold up against the newcomer XB33 and that slightly newer Sony XB32? All similar class of speaker. So that we assume they're all 30 watts because they used to tell us XB32 30 watts. Sony getting a bit shy now. Don't want to tell us the specs. I'm guessing it's 30 watts. It wouldn't be the biggest shock in the world to find out this speaker that replaces it. 30 watt XB32 is a 30 watt speaker. Certainly the JBL Charge 4 is rated at 30 watts. They're all about the same size as you can see, except it's a bit chunkier, the XB33. In terms of actual weight, 900 grams Sony XB32, 965 grams for the JBL Charge 4, and it's one kilo for the XB33. So not much in it, but strictly speaking, the chunkier XB33 is indeed the heavier speaker. But look, all very similar in your hand, all very similar size, but yeah, it is a bit chunkier, the Sony XB33. Checking the prices on Amazon this morning. Wasn't that long ago. I was checking it was 150 quid for the Sony XB33. It's down to 120 pound. For some reason, it's diving in price. Could it be it's trying to take on the Charge 4, which also happens this morning when I checked Amazon in the UK, 120 pound, and you can still get the old Sony XB32 for 80 pound. So hmm, you could save yourself 40 quid, get the XB32. Hmm, I wonder if it's really that far behind the Sony XB33. What what is what else is different? Well, of course, Sony being Sony, they do have a decent codec, the LDAC codec. So you get that in these two speakers, but you, just, you get standard SBC in the JBL Charge 4. It's Bluetooth 4.2 for them all, except for the new one, the XB33 Bluetooth 5. They all have true wireless stereo pairing. They all have USB-C, except for the older Sony XB32, which is micro USB. XB32 and the Charge 4 have an auxiliary input. The Sony XB33 does not have auxiliary in. You can use them all as a power bank. Now, they'll all float, but it's pretty much useless if it floats with the drivers down and you can't hear it. You know, <laughs> you're not gonna have a lot of fun with that other than it's gonna be easy to pull out if indeed you've dropped it in the pool by mistake. Now, this is where the Sony XB33 has a trick up its sleeve. It's the first one I've had that plays floating and with the drivers up. You can actually leave it floating in the pool and use it and in a, in a usable way. The drivers are firing up, it still plays a decent listen. It's not gurgling because it's down. Now, the Charge 4 floats, but it's, it floats with the drivers sideways, so they're basically underwater. Only the Sony XB33, in fact, all the speakers I've had, drivers up, you can actually leave it in the pool, you're on your lilo, you, you, you're laying there next to it, and you're having a blissful time because your speaker is floating with you and it's firing up. You can hear it in a real, sense. They are, of course, all IPX7. Now, JBL being JBL, uh, whatever they can get away with, they'll get away with. Well, they got away with a mono speaker. So we've got a mono a racetrack driver, as they call it. Mm, it's really fast. It's a racetrack driver, but it's, it's a mono speaker. A lot of people have a lot of theories why they're doing that. My theory is it's cheaper. Um, I don't think it would be groundbreaking to suggest they've done it for cost reasons. But maybe, hey, they really did have some reason for giving you a what was a stereo form factor, but with a single driver. Of course, we do have old fashioned stereo twin drivers. They all, of course, have passive radiators. Well, we've got passive radiators on the side, passive radiators on the side, but front and back on the Sony XB32. The other big deal is latency. The Sony XB33 is the best speaker I've had for latency. 50 milliseconds on average, YouTube or playing files locally is the best I've had. 50 milliseconds means basically it's in sync. You're not going to really notice anything other that's not in sync. The Charge 4 is pretty awful. Um, I've got an average of 270 milliseconds and I've got 130 milliseconds for the Sony XB32. So awful. You're going to notice it. You're not going to notice it. It's going to be a really good experience. 
using something on YouTube or watching a film on the Sony XB33. You're really asking yourself, well, mate, come on. What do they sound like? It's all right, giving us the specs, we want to hear it. Well, as always, I am matching volume, I'm matching loudness, and I'm doing it in luffs. Got to have some basis uh, to, to have a bass line on these speakers, so I do it with luffs. If they're particularly dynamic, uh, it can be an issue, but basically luffs, and then finally normalizing afterwards. That means they're not playing at the same volume, because in the real life, the volume steps are quite weird on these speakers and they're completely out of step. So I'm playing what should be my 50% test. It means 49% on the XB33, 43% on the XB32, and it's 33% on the JBL Charge 4. Most noticeable is completely recessed mids on the XB32, giving it a very bass heavy sound. The biggest bass is on the Sony XB33. The Charge 4 has the thinnest bass. So for me, it's between the Sony XB33 and the JBL Charge 4. Who won that little battle? Well, one thing's for sure, it wasn't the XB32, which you, why I've always said, and I, you know, I have taken the mickey out of this speaker in the past, it's off. The speaker is just off. I don't really understand the tuning, how it came to be. Was it, you know, the actual form factor itself means it's really muffled because there is some heavy duty protection going on there in front of the drivers, which is not quite as extreme on the XB33. Whatever it is, it sounds off. It's very recessed. The bass is there. The bass is heavy enough. It's about the same as the Sony XB33, but Everything else is recessed. It's not a listen unless you just want bass and nothing else really matters to you. Now, big difference between the XB33 at these volumes, Charge 4. Certainly digs deep on the XB33, no complaints there. Um, there's a lot of fizz. It's very forward mids. You've got to have to like your mids, but it does add up to some mids. You know, the vocals, maybe a slightly sibilant, but it's an enjoyable enough listen. I can't really knock it. It's a decent listen to be fair enough. And the Charge 4, well, there's a lot missing in the mids. 
Uh, it's a clean sound and the vocals are much more forward. So the difference between these two, you know, it's going to be taste. Which one would you go for? Forward vocals, lack of mids, but quite clean sounding. But the bass, the bass is there, but it's very thin. JBL being JBL, they tune it. Oh, we want the bass there and nowhere else. And that's what you get. You just get this thin uh, peak for the bass. It's not very rounded or full. You've got a rounded full bass with the Sony XB33. Let's go up, volu go up in volume a little bit. So my 70% test is going to mean 73% XB33, 60% XB32, and 49% on the Charge 4. Sony XB32 does have the deepest bass, a bit better in the mids now than at the lower volumes. The Charge 4 matches the Sony's at bass peak around 70 hertz, but can't match them in the deep bass, minus 40, minus 30, minus 36. Pretty much the same story that I think we're already getting the nature of these speakers. Not quite as bad as at lower volumes on the Sony XB32. It certainly improves as you're going up the volume scale, but you do have recess mids. <laughs> there are dips where there shouldn't be dips. It's it just, just sounds off. Charge 4 sounds clean, missing the mids. So you, you got forward clean vocals, you got some bass, but it's not very rounded, but you don't have much else. You got a full sound with the Sony XB33. The bass is full, the bass is pretty deep, but there's a lot of fids. Uh, the, the mids being a little bit uh, too prominent, a little bit too forward. So in some regards, you could say it muddies the vocals a little bit because there's more going on than perhaps uh, you'd really want. But it's a full sound, sounds, decent enough mids can give you some clarity or well, you know to me that's a very fizzy sound that was 70 percent we're going to have to push the sony as you can see that the volume scale is quite different on these speakers going to have to push it to get some real world volumes 90 percent 90 percent on the sony xb33 means 89 percent for the xb33 83 percent for the sony xb32 69 percent for the jbl charge 4 I'm the girl that they don't talk about Quiet with a big mouth Listen for the doubt, then call it Make you out for what you say to me Look at every single need If you got what I need, then oh I'll take you on like a big deal Legs you can unseal Keep ignition Just keep me full like a meal Once in a while feel all right I know you like it Can't fight it I'ma let you ride the Shock 
Pushing the Sony at 89%, and the bass is dropping off, which means the Charge 4 at 69%, although they're playing around the same volume at these volume steps, is now holding its own in the bass, except for the deep bass. Minus 43 at 50. It still has a very thin bass, cannot match either of the Sony's. The Sony XB32 having the deepest bass, although it does sound a bit off. Sony XB33, lighter bass, but still has that prominent mids, giving it more fids over the XB32 Charge 4, sounding a bit cleaner, but without the deep bass. So, you know, the basic nature of the speakers is still there, except that because the Sony is now at 90%, it is reducing bass. All these speakers do reduce the bass. and But the Sony having this, the XB33 having its particular uh, weird linear scale means you're hitting higher volumes first. Uh, and so the, the bass is coming off. So at these particular volumes, if that was a volume you're listening at and then you're trying, to, you're getting them all the same volume, the same perceived loudness. Certainly the, the XB32 is doing better at loud, uh, louder volumes because the mids are coming, uh, are not quite recessed. But it sounds off. It just sounds weird to me. But the, the difference between the Charge 4 and the XB33 remains. It's missing the mids. There's a lot of going on in the sound that, you, that, that you're not, that you, you where should be there and it's not there. But what you do get is a clean sound you get a mono sound, don't forget that, uh, and you get very forward vocals. If you like your vocals, they'll certainly be um, standing out front. You got some bass, but it's not as full as the XB33 or the XB32, and of course, although the, it's not so much in it now at the louder volumes, but as, again, I'll call this a darker sound because it's, some things are stark and some things are missing, but you can't say it's bad in any way, whereas you can say the XB32 is just off. So again, it's taste, isn't it, between Charge 4 XB33 with its forward mids and that space is coming off now. Well, so we're nearly at uh, maximum volume. Let's go straight up to maximum volume.
XP33 does go the loudest, thanks to a big 200 hertz boost, which isn't there in the original track, or indeed on the other two speakers. Otherwise, the bass is about the same as the XP32. It's charged for a bit quieter and not quite the bass, but not too far off. No matter how you measure it, the Sony XP33 is the loudest, whether it's peak, luffs, or RMS, it's louder than the other two. But in terms of which is more listenable, which is now still a little bit truer to the original, the original down there, bottom left. If I look at the XB32, far too flat across the mids, we can see the original does drop off, peaking around 3000 hertz, and it's very flat on the XB32. XB33 having that, well, kind of <laughs> ridiculous 200 hertz peak, but the Charge 4 kind of looking the most like the original. So it was a shock to me, that actually, when you go to maximum volume, the loudest is the Sony XB33. All the way through, it seemed like the other two speakers had more headroom. But indeed, partly in nature to its uh, funny linear scale, and partly due to that massive boost at 200 hertz, you get this big boost in the upper bass, which is uh, helping the overall perceived uh, loudness uh, to your ears, and the Charge 4 bringing up the rear. However, Sony XB32, as all the way through this test, it, to me, to you, maybe the greatest speaker in the world. To me, it just sounds off. It just sounds weird. And I hardly, rarely ever use In fact, the only time I ever use this is as a comparison with another speaker because it's just so off. And that's rare for me. I listen to most of my speakers because I do like listening to something with a little bit of a different character every so often. So it goes louder on the XB33. It does have a foolish bass, but it has that ridiculous upper bass peak, uh, despite still having the bass. But do you know what? The Charge 4 uh, sounds more right. Uh, there's nothing quite wrong with it. The problem for me, obviously, uh, well, I say obviously, it might not be obvious to you. If you've only got one, it's mono. Everyone keeps, ah, well, you can't hear the difference. Only a little speak and you can't. I personally can hear the difference, and you should be able to hear the difference, certainly if you're listening close up. Your ears should perceive even that tiny, tiny different uh, phase timing differences. You should be able to interpret it a little bit of that into some sort of image. I know it's not going to be like a like a soundbar kind of image for your movies, but you should be able to get some difference between a mono and having two twin drivers. For me, I can hear it, everybody else, well, a lot of people say they can't hear the difference. For me, that almost on its own is a deal breaker, but I have to say, when you hit max and volume, it does sound uh, still truer to the original track, but ultimately, Sony XB33 goes louder, and of course, it's not just about maximum volume, it's about the volumes below, so, I can't knock the Charge 4 uh, in this particular test. I could, probably could if it was against the Motion Plus. I'd say it doesn't go very loud. But in this particular test, we know once and for all, Sony XB32 is not really going to be your first choice. Your, or, or, or indeed, any choice ever. Uh, certainly ever again. Now we've got the Sony XB33. Quite like the Sony XB33. Uh, kind of reminds me of the Charge 4. We've got four of, of the Charge 3 in that, it, you know, it's, it's not just about of the bass certainly has very forward mids but it can obscure the vocals a little bit uh, it can make it sound muddy when it's when in fact it's all there charge for you're certainly going to get full clear vocals but you're going to be aware you're not hearing well you, you'd be aware if you've got other speakers if you haven't got other speakers you wouldn't be aware at all uh, those mids are missing if you do a frequency sweep uh, it appears to be there but actually listening to that driver um, it you, you certainly not it's certainly not uh, making its way towards me ears the vocals are the bass, the thin bass is, and it sounds very clean. I can't say it's terrible, but I'm certainly aware, having listened to other speakers, of what I'm not getting parts of the track. If you want to listen in any sort of analytical way, it's going to be missing on the Charge 4. So that was my comparison of the Sony XB33, the JBL Charge 4, Sony XB32. I hope you're signing out my video, and I thank you for watching.